Hi you guys, namaste and welcome. I am Miss Mariah with Little Healers. You can call me Mariah for right now because you know we're just having a chit chat today. Um, if you were already on my business Facebook page um, previously you may have seen this downtime video processing video that I had up. Um, essentially like in this last week I have like eliminated social media from my life. In previous weeks I kind of eliminated um, responding to like texts and stuff not on purpose it was just like swiping messages and then realizing three days later that I did that and going back to text people back and uh, yeah so bear with me over the next few weeks while I navigate all of this stuff but um, anyways like I've just really started disconnecting with my social life to really reconnect with myself and what I need right now and just really honoring my need to kind of go inward, be secluded, and just really be in my own energy. Um, and sometimes you feel really called to be social. Sometimes you feel really called to like just be with yourself. And I'm in a phase of life that um, I'm just really being drawn to just be with me. And so... Um, this is what this phase of my life seems to be all about. So the reason why I'm creating this video is because there's not a lot of content going on to my social pages. Um, every year I delete social media at least once. I really don't care for it, but now day and age, this day and age, um, it's kind of one of those things that you have to have to grow your business, to stay relevant, so that people know what you have going on. And um, it's just not something that really resonates with me. I really enjoy YouTube because it gives me like a bright, like this really lovely platform where you type into the search engine looking for what you want. And one of these videos comes up. So I'm not something that you're scrolling through on your news feeds on Facebook or Instagram wishing that you didn't see, right? Like YouTube, you're typing in, you're looking for this kind of content. And so I really love YouTube for that reason. It's giving you what you want because you're looking for it, right? It's super easy to use. For Facebook, you just get a lot of nonsense. Then there's this paid blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's what's going on if you follow me on social media. I'm just not about it. I haven't been about it. I feel very resistant to it. Um, but I try to do it to keep up with the, with the times and it's just not for me. So I've just decided to honor that in the last few weeks and really back off of it. And I feel really good about it. So I'd like to invite you to follow that feeling, even if it's not a social norm, to just trust that it's what's best for you and your energy. So if you don't know a lot about me, I do energy work, energy healing. I teach yoga, um, kids yoga trauma-informed yoga, all of that good stuff. And um, when I was going through my 500 RYT, so registered yoga teacher training, I took this workshop at the end of it where we all got a, we all got turns to teach a 30-minute workshop, essentially. And one of the girls that was teaching did this workshop on the importance of downtime. And it's something that's truly resonated with me so much and I've lost contact with her I wish I had her name her name was Yasmin I believe um maybe you've heard of her <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about right now but anyways so she was just entirely lovely and she did this whole presentation on downtime so I live in America the amazing thing about YouTube is that so many people from all over the world see these videos so um I don't know what you guys have heard about America from <laughs> where you guys are at in the world. I would say all of it's probably relatively fair. Um, but anyway, here in America, we are kind of brought up, I guess, like, you know, you get a lot of freedoms, which, you know, a lot of us get to speak freely, which is lovely. Um, I won't dive too deep into any of that um, to be sensitive as well. But... The point I'm getting at here is over here in the Western world, we kind of have this need to constantly be going, which creates a lot of chaos. So what I mean by that is like from the time you wake up, you either go to school for like from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. and then, you know, you're doing homework until about 5 p.m. or you're working in 8 to 5 essentially and then you get home and you have responsibilities, right? But it's this constant going and then you're trying when you're not working or going to school, you're trying to like, you know, stay active. Maybe it's your social life or maybe it's exercising, personal development. It's just this need over here to just constantly stay busy. Like if you sit still in the West, it's perceived as lazy. 
that's perceived as not driven. Um, every moment that we get to ourselves, we feel like we have to do something with it. And it's just something that's created by the lifestyle that we live here in America for whatever reason. I don't know why it's like that. But that's why this workshop has really stuck with me is being a yoga teacher and always resonating with these yoga teachings before I was a yoga teacher reminds me of why it's so important to share the message of downtime no matter where you live but particularly here with my brothers and sisters in America um, so downtime it's so important because in the day our brains and our bodies and our energy is taken every single thing that we're exposed to whether it's scrolling on our news feeds even if you don't remember everything you've seen you do like your your brain holds it in there um, every single thing that's triggered your physical body gets stored. And unless we release this energy, you know, like it's going to stay trapped in there, making us feel like we have to be on the move. So being in this Western world where we're constantly in movement, it's so important to remember to take time for yourself. And so like if you take a moment here to think about your downtime, what do you do with it? When I was taking this workshop, I said, listen to music, read a book, and this is a yoga teacher training, and we are about eight months out of the ten months into it, and so like at this point in my downtime, I've already weighed studying and meditating and having a daily yoga practice into my schedule. So my me time is not consistent with yoga because you'll burn out if you're going to yoga school, teaching it professionally, and then in your free time you're doing it. Like all things in moderation you will burn out if you are doing yoga in your free time at that point and so my free time was going to like maybe reading a book or listening to some music or sitting outside on my deck just doing nothing and um what this girl said she said is it really downtime if your brain is taking something in so is it downtime if you're listening to music not really. That might be a way to decompress, but it's not really downtime because you're filling it with something. You're filling it with a noise and an experience. Reading a book, again, you're filling your mind with thoughts and imagery and imagination or knowledge, depending upon what you're reading, right? Downtime is maybe getting out of your regular environments, so like your home, maybe stepping outside a change of scenery and doing nothing with it except for existing. So that is what I'm getting at right now, is taking time to just exist. So getting out of your normal day-to-day, -day, let's just go sit or stand somewhere without the music playing, without chit-chatting, without looking for something to do, and just sitting with that busy feeling and just letting it wash away. I literally, like my downtime now, not every downtime moment I have of the day, because, you know, sometimes downtime is like, I want to take six naps a day. That's not what I'm getting at here, um, which is okay if you do it. But at least for 10 to 15 minutes a day, I allow myself downtime for just me to exist. I don't have to be Mariah the yoga teacher. I don't have to be Mariah the mom. I don't have to be Mariah with responsibilities. I'm just Mariah in the existence of this earthly world. So I'll go sit on my deck, maybe with a blanket on my lap if it's cold, and I will literally just stare off into the sunset. I'll blink normally, I'll breathe normally. Like in meditation, you know, we close our eyes, we have maybe a pranayama practice to keep us focused. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just focusing on existing, which is not focusing at all. I'm looking off into space. I'm just allowing myself to be the Mariah that exists here. So you just sit and you exist and you allow yourself to do nothing except exist without the pressure to perform without the pressure to be busy and if that pressure rises up just letting it go right and just allowing yourself to be there and why is this so important to do it is important for your brain for your energy and for your body so when you're exercising say that your heart rate is up and you just stop your exercise there and then you go take a shower your body has not cooled yet. It doesn't know that we are stopping that high heart rate. So throughout our day, obviously we're not going to be breathing as heavy because we're going to be walking. We didn't let our body know that we're cooling. So what's happening is throughout the day, we're experiencing extra stress because we didn't let our physical body know, hey, 
It's time to deactivate. It's time to let go of the high heart rate, the heavy breathing. We're not trying to stay elevated. We're trying to decompress. We didn't let our body know that. So throughout the day, it stays in this state of stress because we didn't let it know that it needed to cool. The same thing happens with our minds, right? So our brain never forgets anything and our eyes are kind of a portal to bring all that information in and receive it. So as we go through the day, we see stop signs. We see faces. We scroll through Facebook for however many hours, whether we want to admit it or not, right? Our brain takes it all in. And if we just keep taking it in, what happens is all of a sudden we go to lay in bed, we close our eyes and we can't sleep because our mind's running at 300 miles an hour because it hasn't had any time to store any of those files or put things in file cabinets. The way I like to look at it is the kitchen table. I don't know what your kitchen table looks like at home. But this is how my kitchen table looks like at home. You can tell my mental health by how my kitchen table looks like. It's the first place I try to organize for my own energy. My kitchen table is right as I walk in. So my purse and keys will usually go there in which I organize on the counter later nicely hang the keys above the stove, purse by the microwave. My kitchen table. <laughs> I try to keep it clean, I try to keep it wiped down. But eventually life gets busy, right? It's not just me living in my home, it's my children as well. They're taking up space here as well. So sometimes there's pop Pop-Tarts, there's cups, there's crayons, there's pencils, and there's my own work stuff. I have a desk downstairs, but you know, to be around my kids so they don't, my business is in my home, we live in my home, all of it kind of meshes. So I've got a separate space to do business. But if I'm doing business eight hours of the, of the day and my kids are upstairs, I'm missing out on them, right? And so I bring it upstairs. It happens. It's inevitable. I always thought I'd be able to separate the energies. I can't. I can't do it. And so sometimes it's my own personal development notebooks. Sometimes it's my work-related stuff. Um, it might be bills depending upon the time of the month it is. Sometimes my physical kitchen table is cluttered. So I consciously remember to go put things back down in my desk, take things to the kids' room, put the cups in the sink, put the Pop-Tarts back in the cupboards so that my kitchen table is nice and clear. That's what happens with your mind when you lay in bed and you've scrolled through Facebook, you've drove around the city, you've hung out with friends, and you've not given yourself 15 minutes to just exist. That's you going to bed with a messy kitchen table inside of your mind. And so what downtime does is it gives us the permission to process. So your brain really needs that downtime to organize everything. So by just sitting and existing and allowing your eyes to wander without any point of focus, without the mind running just being you, sitting on a deck, maybe, I don't know, go sitting in a park, wherever you feel like you can just be you in without the pressure of life, that's where you'd be at for this 10 to 15 minutes a day. And you just existing gives your brain the time to do the things it needs to do to put the files in the right file cabinets so that not everything is sitting on the kitchen table at the end of the night when you go to sleep. So downtime is so important. Downtime's not you being lazy. It's not you being antisocial. It's not you not doing enough. It's not you not staying busy enough. It's you giving your body and your mind what it needs to fully process everything that it's taking in. So my greatest takeaway today, and the reason for this video, because I go off on so many tangents, this is the real Mariah talking to you, not the professional one, not the one making a YouTube channel. This is the real me talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, right? Um, telling you to take downtime because it's so important and it totally changes your life. I can tell when I haven't taken enough moments for me because when I try to lay down at night, my brain and my mind and my body is so busy. Maybe my legs are restless. Maybe I've got 3,000 thoughts going through, scrolling through my own head. Or maybe it's just my, my entire being just feels busy like I should get up and go do something. So it's just a way of letting your mind organize everything that you've taken in and process it all. So we don't have so much unprocessed stuff stored that when we're trying to go to bed and really let our bodies know we're shutting down, it takes it as that time to process things. And then it takes a processing time to get you to sleep. So to avoid that processing time at the end of the night, intentionally taking time throughout the day to do that will allow you to have a more restful night and easier time getting to sleep at the end of your day because you've taken time to just let everything in your mind process. So go forth, 
find something that allows you the time to process. And if you like what I'm saying, there's a whole girl who teaches this entire workshop. I did like a 30 minute workshop on this. It was amazing, it changed my entire life. 10 to 50, I can't even imagine what the full two hour workshop of this would be like. But go forth, try, do, giving yourself 10 to 15 minutes a day of downtime with just existing as the you that you are because it's enough it doesn't need you don't need to be busy you really don't um just give yourself the permission to exist as you for 10 to 15 minutes and see the way that it transforms your life trust me trust me trust me give it a try all right 15 minutes of me going on a tangent about downtime could have been 15 minutes of your life giving it to yourself. So if you had time to watch this video, you had time for downtime, I promise. Namaste and stay well. Let me know how it goes. I'm excited to hear about it. Take care.